going to uh, talk about VRMAP, which is bringing OpenStreetMap data into Web of VR. So it's, and it's actually using the real world data. As one, one thing I would like to know is how many people here are OpenStreetMap users at least? Okay, how many of you have worked with the Overpass API? So very few, okay. Uh, has any anyone been to my talk yesterday? Okay, it will be very similar. I will talk a little bit more about the OpenStreetMap uh, parts of this, but it will be very similar. It's the same slides. Okay. Uh, the slides are up at uh, slides.pyro.at slash postum2019. I did not get around yet to put it on the main page of slides Cairo AT. They, they will be there, uh, linked there, I think, tomorrow or something, as soon as I get to it. Um, I'm Robert Kaiser. I'm a Mozilla tech speaker. Most people call me Cairo. Uh, and I'm also an OpenStreetMap contributor uh, and have been for, for a long time, mostly in Austria. Uh, also pretty active in the Austrian OpenStreetMap community. So what is this talk about? Mainly, uh, what I want to tell you about is the cross-device nature of those technologies of WebVR or WebXR. The ease of use of the library I'm using, which is A-Frame, which makes it really easy to get stuff in, uh, into WebVR. And the ability to use OpenStreetMap data in, for this audience specifically, also uh, a few tricks I'm doing with OpenStreetMap data for this visualization. So first, what is Web, Web XR or Web VR? It's virtual, Web VR is virtual reality done with web technologies, so HTML, JavaScript, and so on. Uh, Web XR is a word, is mixed reality. This is a pretty new term. Uh, it was, was crafted to put AR and VR under one uh, phrase and make one standard that, that encompasses all of those, uh, AR, VR, and everything in between. Uh, at the W3C, uh, there's a working group for that and a proposed standard for WebXR. The uh, AR parts of that are still somewhat in flux. The VR parts of that are pretty stable now. And, and multiple browsers actually have implementations for it. It bases on WebGL, Web Audio, and for the, the controllers, uh, on the gamepad, gamepad APIs. Um, it can be used on full VR headsets, of course. Uh, both the three degrees of freedom ones, like this one, and the six degrees of freedom, they give you full immersion, so you can also walk in the scene. With those, you can only turn around. Um, and on the, for the desktop devices, for the PC-connected devices, like the HTC Vive and the Oculus Rift, Firefox in release on Windows already supports WebVR completely. So you just plug in your HTC Vive or whatever, uh, launch the VR tools, launch Firefox, and enter the v uh, VR from the browser uh, with the HTML and JavaScript technologies. On Mac, I think it's in beta right now. Uh, it, it was set back to nightly at some point and then put back into beta again. We want to, Mozilla wants to release it soon but uh, there have been a few complications with the drivers. On Linux, the, drive, the drivers for the HTC Vive are still experimental, uh, and Mozilla uh, is also missing a few patches in, in the graphics stack, so it's not there yet, but it's in works. Uh, for the Oculus Rift, there's no drivers for, for Mac and Linux. As soon as Facebook bought it, they stopped all development on Mac and Linux. Make your own thing out of it. Um, but that said, the, the default Oculus browser on the Oculus Go and the Samsung Internet browser for uh, their, their Samsung devices, uh, those also implement WebVR. And as far as I know, Microsoft has done some support in Edge for the HoloLens, but I don't know the real state of that. So there is implementations in a few browsers. 
Uh, of course, for, for those standalone headsets, there is Firefox Reality, uh, which also supports it, uh, which is a browser for those standalone headsets. Uh, VR map itself is a, a demo I did with live OpenStreetMap data from the Overpass API, that's why I asked before. Uh, it's usable in 2D mode even outside of the VR devices. So you can actually use your phone or your tablet or your PC and look into this as well. I will, in, uh, in the next slide or in the next minutes, show you the same thing here on the projector, just in 2D mode. But when you go into a VR device where you have controllers, where you have a headset, uh, you can immerse yourself completely. It's using the Mozilla A-Frame library, I'll be coming back to that. Uh, and it's a very simple demo. It only has about 80 lines of HTML, most of which are the starting dialog, which we will see. And about 300 lines of JavaScript, and quite a bit of that is code I'll actually show you, because it makes a few decisions about defaults for, uh, for stuff that comes from OpenStreetMap. But the code is not very difficult. Uh, it's made for people like you to take it and make something of, uh, out of it yourself. So let's take a look at the demo itself. When you when you launch it, this is the start dialog, and that's that's what I said. Take takes up quite a bit of that uh, uh, of those eighty lines of HTML, and most of it is explanations, uh, including of course the OpenStreetMap copyright. Uh, and you have a few presets of where you can go. Those are presets that have at least something that, that looks decent. You can actually enter coordinates, and, and I did this be, before in the cafeteria with someone, and he was, oh, wow, this is it, it actually this place where, where I'm at home. Uh, everybody seems to do where he's at home. Uh, so did I, because this first preset is what, what you see in the back there is actually in front of, of the door of the building I'm living in. Um, this is very new to it, and I already went there to not uh, bore you with flying around too much. Uh, so th this is the view of very near. Back there is where I'm living, uh, if you wonder. Uh, so this is a view around of a uh, part of, of this area. Uh, I'm not loading. Uh, more than this area right now in this demo, it's very, the, the code is, is made in a way that it should be easy to, to dynamically load more, but for a demo I was like, let's not go into the performance aspects of when you have too much loaded, uh, I want to be able to, to show this off and you want to take more out of it, uh, it's not easy, it's not hard to figure out uh, how to do it. Uh, one thing that's nice here, and that's why I like the example of this area, is that in Vienna we, we could import some uh, data for the, for the trees. All trees in, in public areas in Vienna have an uh, open government index, and we imported that into OpenStreetMap, and so we know the height of the trees, we know the circumference of, uh, um, uh, uh, of the, the leaves and so on, and uh, we know the, uh, the diameter of the crown, that is, and the circumference of the trunk. So I can use all that. <laughs> um, I still use the very simple model for trees, but um, still you get different sized trees and that's that's pretty nice. Um, in, in that you preview picture I have here, you see that for needle leaf trees, I have a different uh, way of displaying them even. so because we have that data as well, and OpenStreetMap has the text for it, which is nice. Um, so, <coughs> you have that with the uh, AWS keys, you can fly around in the scene. So you see there's some trees even in there. Those trees have, uh, are, uh, have no further text, those are just some defaults. And you see you have different heights of the buildings as well, uh, which, <coughs> Usually in OpenStreetMap you don't have a lot of heights of buildings, you have some. But then if you have the amount of levels a building has, you can do a pretty good estimate. And then I have a few things and I'll, I'll show you a bit of that. 
of how I get to, to heights when I don't know much. In this area, I walked around with, with a sheet and just put in a, uh, with, with printed out open street map data and just uh, wrote, this is six stories, this is five, this is four, this is one. And so we get a pretty nice picture of a realistic view. So that, that's the, the demo of how it looks in principle. So <coughs> to make that code simple, I had to start with a few simplifications. And one of them was that the world is flat. Actually, it's flat in two ways in this demo. Uh, for one thing, there's no curvature uh, of Earth. That makes it much easier in terms of calculations. And for the other thing, there's no hills and valleys. But before the flat, flat Earth support a series of choice too much, I actually had to respect the latitude and the curvature of Earth uh, because I'm using the, the ground tiles from Mercator Projection. And those change size based on latitude. <coughs> and so uh, the coordinate system inside the VR space is in meters. So I needed the size in meters of those ground tiles. Uh, those ground tiles are, uh, I'm just using from the default MapNake tiles that OpenStreetMap renders. I'm using it via a tile cache that I'm operating myself to not overtax OpenStreetMap servers. The trees and buildings though, I'm taking directly from the OverPass API. So that's really live data. If you change it in OpenStreetMap, if you add the tree, a few minutes later you actually have it in this demo as well. Uh, there's a camera and controller setup uh, that the library has some defaults, but it, uh, if you want the controllers to, to work right, you need to, to put some setup in there uh, and uh, to enable this flying navigation and things like that as well. And it's built with uh, the A-Frame library. So the A-Frame library, I just mentioned that second time and now I really should tell you what it is. It's a Mozilla library that makes it really, really easy to create VR scenes. Basically, you include a JavaScript file at the top of your HTML file, and then you write some tags. Those are not in the HTML standard, but the library interprets them and makes something out of them. On the outside, you put an A scene tag, and then everything in there is used and rendered in the VR space. <coughs> like an A sphere, an A cube, an A cylinder, an A plane. The planes are the tiles on the floor, of course, uh, in, in my example. This here is not the code I'm, I'm using. This is an, an example, and I'll show you in a minute how this example looks. And you can even do animation of things by just putting an animation inside something, and then this something is animated with those properties. And you just use um, standard HTML <coughs> syntax to put properties on those things. So you have a position, you have a radius. That sky with the color is just a sphere that has the inside painted with that color. And if you put uh, a sky src equals something, then you actually have this image that you put in the SRC projected on uh, the inside of that sphere. So that you can e very easily get a texture on it as well. Or a 360 degree image if you want to. Um, so you only need to know HTML if you can do VR scenes. That's a uh, pretty nice thing. Uh, to show you how this example looks, I probably need to reload because it uh, still says loading. Was, yeah, and now it's loading. So let's make it a little bit bigger. That's the scene you just uh, saw described, and the code is a bit small, but it's still uh, up here. Uh, it's the same. The default even has the the scrolling with the keys, so, uh, the ESD keys, and you saw that animation with the tag and the cube is just rotating. It's, we didn't even write any JavaScript and it's, it's rotating. That's nice. Um, well, 
underneath it, it has the 3 js library, which is a heavy JavaScript thing, but it's abstracted enough that we uh, can do easy things. Uh, so th this is, if you look at the sl slides, the edit view link is so that what I just showed you. And you can dynamically try out stuff there as well. So if you want to, you get, can go in here and say, if you change the axis location. Um, which one? This here? Zero three sixty zero. No, no. Three sixty to different axes. This too. Yeah, I can. I can change that. Let's let's make this zero. Uh, now it's not animating at all because it's animating by zero. And make let's make this three sixty. And now it's going a different axis. And I can exchange the colors and whatever I got dynamically see here. So it's, it's pretty nice. Um, you can learn more about A-Frame at A-Frame.io. Uh, it also has a few other samples there. But I wanted to, to get back to, to my uh, demo. Uh, we'll take a short look into index.html, but I went to that more in, uh, in the Mozilla room. Uh, and, and you can uh, look into it yourself as well. I want to get more to the OpenStreetMap things here. Um, that has the start dialog and, the, and this camera controller thing. Uh, Map.js is the main uh, JavaScript file that, that loads all, all the stuff and does the fetch from overpass. Conversions is boring, but it's necessary because uh, you have a lot of coordinate conversions in there. Uh, position limit is a, an A-frame component. Uh, I wrote that, uh, and it's a very nice example for uh, how you write an A-frame component. I went to do this yesterday. I will not do that today to have a bit more time for the OpenStreetMap parts. Um, I had the problem when I was flying, I could fly through the ground. So I said, let's do it right and write something that uh, prohibits me from going through the ground and test this. And it's a very nice example of how to easily do uh, a component. And then I have tiles, trees, and buildings chairs that loads and draws these three tile types of objects. So the tiles on the ground and the trees and the, and the buildings. It's on GitHub at kairo-at slash vrmap. You will see that URL later. And with that, I'll look, let's look at the code, then we come back to what we learned. Uh, so yeah, this is still from yesterday. That's the, the component. The one thing that's interesting in the component is there's a tick function in there. You just write one function, and that's called it every time the display updates, and that's the tick. Uh, and basically, on every tick, I set back the coordinate uh, if it's outside of my constraints. It's, it's very easy. So let's go back here and take a short look into index.html. This has a lot of imports of scripts. This is the main A-frame, and then I have a few additional components. There is a components index in, uh, on A-frame.io where you can find a few things that you can easily plug in. and. Uh, make it easier without <coughs> writing stuff without JavaScript. That's all the intro dialogue. And then here we have the AC. That still fits on one screen. Uh, a entity is basically the diff of a frame. So it's the container that it can be anything and can contain it. Uh, and actually, an A cube or something is just a specialized A entity. And so the ground is a, is a workaround, but the, uh, the map entity that has an, a container for tiles and a container for items, which is trees and buildings. And here's the camera rig. Uh, a component enables another uh, attribute here. So you have movement controls that are allowed to you, you to fly. And here I'm putting in my uh, the, that my own component that you saw for a minute there, 
position limit equals with, with those parameters that the y min uh, zero is the really important one that I cannot go through the floor. I did not mention the coordinate system. Uh, I said I'm saying y min just if it was the most natural thing. Uh, so if you stand in the VR scene, then x is horizontal, y is vertical, and c is the component that goes towards you or away from you. So that's why y min is, uh, is zero here. And I will not go into the mix-ins here, but you have a head that's 1.6 meters above the ground, which is feels pretty natural for most people to have the, the head about, around that above the ground. Uh, and then you have a left hand and right hand for the controllers. Um, and it loads those controllers if any of those things is is present. So it's it's not that hard to understand if you take a, a bit of time to look at it. I know it's a bit fast now to just have something thrown up here, but it's not hard to understand. Um, and then I want to take a bit of a look, so the tiles are pretty simple, but the tree, so yeah, anyone who has worked with overpass, here's the stuff that, that looks familiar to those who have used overpass. Uh, here I'm, I'm having the overpass query. The bounding box string is calculated from whatever we're displaying. Uh, and otherwise it just loads all nodes with natural equals three. Who has actually edited OpenStreetMap in here? So those of you uh, natural equals three will, will uh, be something you have heard about. Um, and it's, and the, the system of nodes, ways, and relations we probably have heard about as well. Uh, for the others, that the, the data model of OpenStreetMap is you have points that are nodes that have coordinates, then you have connections of nodes that are ways, and you can have relations that's just a meta reference to any object. And any of those can have key value tags. So natural equals tree is, is a tag, and that set, tells me that's a tree very easy to understand in this case. There are some, some that are not that easy to understand, but this is uh, pretty easy to find. And then I fetch that, uh, convert that to GeoJSON, because that's easy to uh, process afterwards. And then here dynamically creating, and you'll see I'm just creating HTML elements. So if you ever create it, uh, stuff with JavaScript, if you ever created elements with JavaScript, that's basically how you did it. If you did not use any abstraction layer, you can uh, actually use all kinds of abstractions like AngularJS or jQuery or whatever with this as well. And then uh, um, I'm setting all kinds of stuff here. Uh, I see I'm pretty much getting to, to end. So one very short look into the buildings. That's a bit more difficult because I had to find out default heights of buildings. So actually, uh, if there is a height equals something tag on it, I'm using that height. Uh, I'm using the, if there's a building levels on it, uh, I'm actually using that and calculating times three. I think I have that down here somewhere. Or I have a meters by per level variable that I'm uh, multiplying with, which is set up here. So I estimate every level is about three meters, which is pretty okay. Newer buildings are uh, usually less, older buildings can even be more. Uh, and if I don't have that, it gets here. But there's, sometimes there's uh, building equals like kiosk or cabin or something like that, or carport. I can safely assume those are one level high. Those will not be higher than that usually. Um, and then I have some special defaults like 
Uh, Howells, I'm estimating, is two levels of, uh, as well as a farm. The transformer tower, I'm estimating, is 10 levels. Uh, is 10 meters high. The water tower, I'm estimating, is 20 meters high. Just to have something that looks somewhat realistic. Um, and under construction, uh, I'm even giving the buildings a different color. And if I ha don't have all that, I'm, I'm going back to a default. And then I ha even have some specialty in there that I will not, because of time reasons, not go in there. Very small buildings, uh, I even go lower than the, than the normal default. So it's not too hard. Uh, I hope that's not too hard to understand uh, in terms of the code. So what we've seen here is how cross the cross device nature of, of those technologies, web VR, web XR. You saw it in 2D mode here. You have to believe me right now that it's working in, in the headset, but you can actually take a look at it afterwards uh, in, in this one. Um, the ease of use of A-frame, I, I showed that quite a bit. Uh, and the ability to use OpenStreetMap data and a bit of how you're using the OpenStreetMap data um, if anyone's interested, I can show, show you or you can look it up how, uh, which query I'm using for the buildings. And there's a few improvements that can even be done there. But uh, what I would really encourage you to do is to look at the code, make it your own. Those are two examples where people have done that. One uh, was for finding the right position of an actual model of a building uh, within uh, a scene, and then you can use those, that uh, right position and put it back into OpenStreetMap, so it's defined how those buildings should be placed when being rendered somewhere. And OSM Rail, someone uh, actually uh, made something where you can uh, ride along the train line and see everything that's around it. And with that, I'm at the end. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy for those. Uh, and if you want to look at it yourself, the URL is up there, the GitHub is up there. Okay. <laughs> One and a half minutes for a question. Anybody? Anyone inspired? Ah. If you want to color all the buildings based on the so I actually have in there that the, the color of the building, if there's just a color equals something, that I'm using that. Uh, I do not have the more extended thing with, with building parts in it, but uh, <coughs> if it's the whole building has one color, you actually have that in there right now. Yeah. Would it support using a photograph of the building as a texture? Um, you would need to program, uh, do some programming to set the SRC and whatever, and it, it's a bit hard because mm -hmm. it would just project it on, uh, around it, so you would probably need to do some manipulation, but I, I think it should be doable. Okay. Well, now we have come to the end of this day uh, in this room. Uh, please fill, fill out the feedback uh, either via your app if you have to write and otherwise buy at the website that gives the organization some guidance for next year how to program and where to program and what to program. Thank you very much for the